same thing happens here that happens in the throne room of God. And in this move of God coming to the earth, people will literally at one point see lightning bolts shooting from the center of this area up here. You'll see them with your natural eyes because you're touching the heart of God. So you'll have a whole new vision of what church is supposed to be. And I was in the throne room one time when they, they, that was going on. It was so powerful. And then the father just raised his hand. He stopped, everybody stopped. And they all brought in pizzas. And they had a pizza party in the throne room of God. And people were laughing and eating every kind of pizza you can imagine. And it was perfect and wonderful and amazing. And, you know, and, um, hey, oh, yeah, they had pizza in heaven, let me tell you. And, and when they were all done with the pizza, whatever they didn't want disappeared because there's nothing to clean up in heaven. No trash. No trash. Y'all should be so excited. <laughs> Have I ever shared that revelation anywhere, Margaret, about the... No. No. Y'all are the first ones to hear that about what the, what the church is supposed to be. You're supposed to duplicate the throne room of God. That's right. But they had a pizza party, and when they were all done, they started dancing again. They dance all the time. And uh, all different styles of music, and somebody was bothered by that. And uh, they you know, I think it's only going to be harmonious. And when it is an amazing harmony, whether it's rock, <laughs> whether it's jazz, all music belongs to God. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> and so I'm going to tell you a whole lot more about heaven. But first, wherever I go and speak... The Father said, you will invite heaven. We're already there, but we want to be invited. And when you create an atmosphere for them, they can't help but come. And, and by the way, the other guys don't want to be assigned to a place that worships and that has freedom. Because when, when the demons go back and they don't finish or complete their assignments, they get punished. God does reward his angels. The enemy punishes his. And, uh, and they don't want to be punished. So sometimes they beg not to go to a place. <laughs> Probably this place a whole lot. But um, I don't know. Do they have my flash drive? Uh, can you put the portal up there? See, I don't just talk about heaven. I show it to you. Would, would you rather see it? That place literally exists in heaven. That is a place that's in heaven. And uh, they call that the portal. And in Hebrews 12.1, I love Hebrews 12.1 because I can't give you scripture for the amusement parks and the Hall of the Nations and the Valley of the Falls and um, all the other places that are up there. But this one I can. There is a great cloud of witnesses. That means they can see and hear. Right? Look it up in the dictionary. They can see and hear. You're a witness to something. That have passed on before you. That means they're up there in heaven watching you. So run your race because they are watching you. Get the sin out of your life. They don't want to see it. <laughs> Get rid of any weight that gets in your way that hinders you from getting that goal. Because they are making plans for you to be there one day with them. And so there is a place, this place is many of them in heaven, and uh, I have been in them, and they walk in this beautiful doorway. I'm going to tell you right now why, why, where arches came from. Don't you love, I love the architecture. I have always loved that. I'm also a photographer, and I love art, but I've always loved arches. My home has about 10 of them in it, and now I really love them. You know why God created arches? Because if you're an angelic being and you're walking like this, your wings form an arch about four feet over your head. And if all the doorways were square, they'd have to bend. <laughs> Things have such a simple explanation. So the Father said, all arches, all doorways in heaven will be arched. And the angels don't have to bend over. Isn't that wonderful? And some doorways are 50 feet high. There's angels much bigger than that. But that's where that architecture came from. It came from heaven, and the Father did it, so his created beings didn't have to bend over to go through the door. <laughs> Do 
you come through that beautiful doorway, you walk down this long hallway, past these columns, I don't know, I keep saying they're 70, 80 feet high, I've never measured them, and I, you really can't see the ceiling in a lot of the be, be, uh, buildings in heaven, you just can't, everything's so massive. They walk up a stairway, beautiful stairs, and look over a balcony railing, and when, whoever they're thinking of at that time, when they're up on that top step and they look over, God allows them to see and hear you as close as the ceiling in this building. It's just like they're right there. They never missed a baby being born. Nobody. They never missed a wedding. They never missed any significant day in your life. Any kind of rewards or things that you achieved on this earth. Never missed a single time when you prayed with someone to be saved. Never missed a family member receiving Christ. Isn't God amazing? So even though we're kind of, you know, we, we don't really know all that's going on, they know everything. They do. But the thing they know the most is what he's about to do on this, in this time in this earth. And if anyone in your family could come back, it would be for one reason. And that would be to be a part of what he's going to do with you. So the father said, wherever you speak, when you go and speak, we will make sure there's a portal open over that building. And everyone present, all of their family and friends and loved ones living in heaven will be at that portal watching them find out about the place that they have been living in. And right now over this building, there are thousands of people watching from heaven. Right now, if you have anyone there, they're up there. Whether it's a family, friend, loved one, it doesn't matter. He's going to make sure they don't miss. They're more excited than you are. <laughs> Praise God. So we're going to welcome heaven. Everybody look up and say, Father, we welcome you. Father, we welcome you. Jesus, our Lord and King. Jesus, our, Lord and King. Our, beloved, our beloved, we welcome you. We welcome you. Holy, Spirit of God, Holy Spirit of God, my best friend, my best friend. We, welcome you. we welcome you. All of the angelic host, All the angelic host. Now, present now present in this room and watching from above. We welcome you and all of our family and friends now living in heaven. We welcome you. Now look up and wave. Hello. Woo! Hey, Dad. <laughs> you can sit down. I told you it was going to be different. Now, you, you got a lot of revelation in just a few minutes, didn't you? It is nothing compared to what you're going to get before I leave here. And um, for those of you, just let me see your hand. They, you don't know anything about me except I have pink hair. If you just came in, don't know, we're going to pray for you. <laughs> Help them, God. And, uh, but, you know, it wasn't by chance. We pray when we know we're going somewhere, we start praying. You will not let one single person miss being in those meetings that you want there. Even if you have to change schedules and timetables and cause things to happen, we declare they'll not miss getting revelation about heaven. They will not miss getting the love that you have for them, to know what your very heart is, to know who they are made in your image. And so uh, you're not here by chance, and there'll be others here tonight that maybe thought they weren't going to come, didn't want to come, don't know why you're getting me there. <laughs> don't ever say that to God. He will make sure you get here if he has to pick you up by the hair of your head and bring you here. Uh, and so you don't want to miss, you really don't want to miss it. Father, we thank you for this amazing time together. God, this was declared and decreed before this day ever came. That you knew that you'd be taking me to heaven. You knew that these people would be sitting in these chairs tonight, God. History makers, world changers. Because that's who he sends us to. You know, now uh, this is like just the forerunner part of what I will be doing. And, um, and so guess what? You're friends of God. He said, before I take you to the world and you'll speak to millions, I'm going to let you meet my friends. So if you ever wonder, don't wonder anymore, he calls you his friends. And so, Father, we thank you, and I thank him personally for allowing me, trusting me 
with your heart 